So hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome to one of my favorite videos to film all year, which is the top 10 roundup of what we've been up to over the last 12 months. But before we delve into it, I wanna say a massive thank you to everyone who has watched, supported, liked, shared the channel and the content over the last 12 months. We've had a phenomenal year. And we're gonna dive into it to find out what's what. Starting off with number 10, which is the new cars that we've added to the channel and the garage this year, starting off with the 993. Now, right at the beginning of this year, we introduced a Porsche 993 and the idea of that was we'd fly it halfway around the world to California to a wonderful company called Gunther Works. They have that car right now and that's going to be a much longer journey than just joining the channel. It's going to be documented as part of a Gunther Works conversion process. That's going to be taking place next year. The chassis has been delivered to them this year and we're going to find some time next year to hop over there and document that process and hopefully have the car in time for a special occasion in 2024. Starts as one of these. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. and we restore it and we up update it and upgrade it and it ends up. So we're not going to give it all away just now. We have a aspirational target in mind mm -hmm. for next year for a significant date as to yeah. when we're hoping to achieve a finished version, right? Yeah, and you like throwing me under the bus. Though. Yeah, yeah. I like to, you know, there's nothing like a good deadline. <laughs> um, but if we can pull it off, it will be incredible, like truly, truly special if we can pull it off. The total opposite ends of the spectrum and a car which has only joined this week, as it happens, is a Porsche Taycan. Now you might be wondering where a bunch of distilled petrol heads on this channel. Now we did have a Tesla that has now made its way over to some of our other team in another company, which I shall touch on later on in this video. We are a car channel and we think it would be remiss of us not to have an EV within the garage. And we thought if we're gonna have an EV, what is the reality of something that we're gonna swap it with? And we went for a Taycan GTS, which is the more, dare I say it, from an electric point of view, driver focused car. So obviously there's no roof blinds with this here. They've created the tech technology to, to, to sort of make do with that so you can just sort of drag across <gasps> there and show it off entirely. Does that make a noise when you, when you do it? There's a slight little like worry. Slight, like, see that? I don't know how they program that glass but that's pretty amazing. <laughs> that? Somebody smarter than me. Look at this. And the third new car to join the channel this year was the BMW M3 Touring. Now this car has been such a phenomenal platform this year. I've been using it for the last few months as my daily, but it's also acted as a car for some of our other team. It's supported us on road trips, track days, filming events, but it also turned out to be quite a substantial platform for project cars, which allows me to conveniently segue on to segment number nine, which is the project cars which have taken place this year. Now, keeping on the theme of the BMW M3 Touring, we took that car to a wonderful company over here in the UK called Auto ID. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it looks a different car. I mean, the last time we left here, like the bumper was off and everything. Every, so as, yeah. a, as, as a change, it's huge. No, it's carnage. And Jack and everyone on their team basically transformed that car. We had an Adro body kit fitted to it, which has totally transformed the aesthetic of that fairly controversial front splitter. It's just lots of carbon, lowered it, HRE wheels, and also a Miltec exhaust system. Turns out this year was actually a pretty big year for project cars. The DBS has been an entirely new interior to match the customized exterior. The reason we're going for this particular interior trim is that the theme of this car and the paint and all of the exterior accents came off a special edition DBX that yeah. we designed in collaboration with Aston. Right. And this is where the sort of bronze accents and gold from, hardware yeah. came yeah. from. And the interior of that DBX sort of complemented the exterior of it with a sort of crisp black Alcantara and matching stitch. Think, yeah. And so this is the first time that I've, I've seen these stitches next to, to the, the car, car to yeah. go, have we got it right? Yeah. So we've gone Alcantara everywhere. And then we've had the contrast stitching matching with the bronze accents, which were custom developed on the outside of that car. And of course, this all took place at Aston Martin Works. The team there are unparalleled when it comes to restoration of Aston Martins worldwide. So stay tuned for an entirely fresh DBS coming to the channel next year. And then on to our favorite little pocket rocket, the Toyota GR Yaris. We took it to String Theory and they augmented this platform to a completely different level. Upgrading brakes, fluids, lines. We put in ceramic pads between the brake pistons and the pads themselves to absorb extra heat. For me, of all of the changes that we've done, 
the seats themselves are the biggest change in terms of how that car looks, feels, and drives. It now feels like you're in a racing seat rather than sat in some sort of high chair. Dramatically transforms that car. <laughs> that was a good laugh. <laughs> Oh, the way it loves a curb, doesn't it? It really does. It just soaks it up. It's so good. Rally. <laughs> I'm doing that oh, just, for fun. just for fun. <laughs> and then one more project car that we actually haven't shared much this year because it's actually been going through a lot more work than we've shared is, of course, the Jaguar Low Drag E-Type, taking it from conventional carbs into modern fuel injection. The way this thing drives now is blow away awesome. It's one of my all-time favorite cars. Aesthetically, it just makes you weak at the knees, and we're really looking forward to doing more with that next year. Now, up there with the DBS in terms of scale of project is the 991 Gen 2 Manual GT3. Now, this thing has had all sorts of augmentations over the last few years, but the big change of this year was the entirely new interior and the entirely new paint job. Interiors do not underestimate what a colossal job it is to do an entire interior. I'm not talking trimming seats, I'm talking everything out, door cards, lower sills, upper dash, there's hundreds of individual components. Now this fantastic company called Penzo did that work and it has transformed it. It's an iridescent sort of Hermes orange interior, blend of Alcantara leather and my favorite fabric in there is this sort of woven Alcantara strands. It's so cool, it's got this tip of the hat to a heritage theme by having these sort of GT40 inspired rivets punctured in the center section of the seats. And it's given this car an entirely new character. So any long-term followers of the channel may be familiar with the story of me saying, I want to reach 100,000 miles in that car. Well, it's only approaching about 60,000 miles so far. So we're not too far off, but in the grand scheme of things, we need to be putting on some more miles. So 2024, expect to see a lot more from the newly renovated 991 Gen 2 GT3. All right, number eight. Now this is working with some incredible people presenting and some world exclusives. But I've got to touch on what Yorkie and I did at the beginning of this year. We spent an entire month in Vegas. Imagine that. Presenting for a show which is going to be coming on a streaming platform to you soon called Banging Gears. Now we were out there with Adam LZ and Colette and we were this trio presenting team of a format of a show which pitches supercars and tuna cars head to head. The format of the show was just wild. Within four weeks, we had 84 cars on set. I mean, this set was huge. There was like 120 crew. We locked down Vegas Motor Speedway for an entire month and people from all over the world flew in for this production. I'm Adam. I'm Colette. I'm James. And this... this and part of that was just one of the most rock and roll experiences this year. And uh, it was just nice to experience what a full fat sort of Hollywood level production, as it were, was like. So banging gears, watch out for that next year. It's gonna be a big one. Now, just to keep the theme rolling of incredible brands that we've worked with this year, let's just touch on some other highlights. We've just come back from Dubai. I was honored to be asked to present the icons of Porsche again this year. Think of like Glastonbury Festival meets Porsche brand. It's the most incredible thing. They had 63,000 registered attendees this year. On the beach in Dubai, Porsche is one of my all time favorite brands. And for them to ask me to be up on stage to represent them, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. So thank you, Porsche. And thank you to everyone who's supported us along the way. And then we've done some fantastic exclusives this year too. So we got the exclusive on the Rolls Royce drop tail. That was their ultra Coachworks one of one project, which we filmed this year. We were also asked to be brand ambassador for the Milla Milia, of which we've done, I think five or six events this year. People typically associate them with the one big event, the one Milla Milia massive annual event every year. But there was the Coppa de Alpi out in Switzerland at the beginning of the year. There is the Middle East event. We did the Milla Milia warm up and training exercise out in Virginia in the USA, which is absolutely stunning. Honored really to be asked to be brand ambassador for this historical and magic automotive event. And it's some of the most beautiful stuff that we've actually captured this year. So thanks Camille team and anyone who's watched that content. So we need to get a better understanding yes. of time and distance. You know, the fundamentals of the whole rally. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let the beautiful cars deceive you. This is one of the most cognitive, challenging car events I have ever taken place in. Welcome to the Millimillia training event. Welcome to the USA. Welcome to Virginia.
finally, one of the other exclusives that we were very kindly invited on this year was the first drive of the production version of the Lotus Evaya electric hypercar. This thing's 2,000 horsepower. They gave it to us at the Nürburgring so we could actually try it on the GP circuit. And the reason we were on that is because it's 2,000 horsepower and in order to really experience it on the road, well, we'd probably end up in prison. So, so they gave it to us on the ring, but why we were truly honored is that we were the first outlet to drive the final production ready vehicle. So thanks to Lotus for that. The views and comments on that were fascinating because it is a potential look at what some of our driving future might look like. To have followed that journey and to finally be in what that production car feels like, that was quite a big tick this year. So that was also an honor to be part of. Okay, number seven. This is some of the best cars that we've driven on the road this year, starting with the Gunther Works Turbo Prototype Mule. Now picture this, we're at Monterey Car Week, it's like 38 degrees, it's baking hot sun. Gunther Works say, hey, this car isn't really ready to be driven right now, but we'd love to invite you down. We go down and check out this development mule. I mean, it's just a stripped out, sort of heavily augmented 993 chassis with their new flat fan charge cooled engine in the back and some revised geometry because they were gonna be shaking it down at Laguna Seca. And we're talking away as if nothing's about to happen. And sure enough, they said, do you know what? Why don't you just take it out and drive it? So they were like, but bear in mind, it's really early. This is nowhere near what this car will be like once it's finished. And it rewrote the smile glands on my face. This thing is unbelievable. Even in development mode, raw, pure, complete, like wires hanging out all over the place. It was way too early for anyone to give me the keys to that car. And yet, if they deliver the car like that, I'd be happy. It was absolutely exceptional. The sound, the pull, the torque, a lot of the new modern turbocharged cars sound like a Dyson. This thing is what old school turbocharged raw pure energy sounds like. And for me, it was one of the best road drives that I've had all this year. Goodness gracious me, this is absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> Bit of white knuckle action going on here. What on earth have you made? Throw the box as well, it's still quite short. I'm actually genuinely getting a little bit emotional about this thing. It's cars don't get made like this anymore. Now, another big mention. We've filmed a lot with Koenigsegg over the years, but believe it or not, I've spent very little time with Christian in his own cars. This year, back at Monterey Car Week, I'm hanging out with Christian in the Koenigsegg Villa, and he's like, have you driven Jesko on the road yet? I'm like, no, not yet. But he goes, let's go. I'm like, okay. So we go out, he throws me the key, and I take Christian for a drive in his own car. So this was one of those moments where you're like, this is weird. This is surreal, pinch yourself moment. And we're in this car and just within like minutes, we're just giggling like petrol heads. <laughs> oh my God, this thing is unbelievable. Just having a whale of a time driving this Yesco around Monterey. The pops and bangs of the overrun turn us into school kids immediately. And it was just really cool to sort of have that moment with Christian where it wasn't about work. It wasn't about filming. It wasn't about anything other than let's just go for a drive and enjoy everything that we've been talking about for the last two years. Now, every year we have quite a few big road trips, but this year, one of our channel partners who are our insurance partner, Chubb, put on this Swiss Alp road trip. But it was just great to go back to the roots of kind of how this channel started, which was enjoying cars, allowing them to take you to places that you might not otherwise go. Now, when I first started this channel, that was kind of what it was all about. It was how do I capture those moments that I love the most about cars? And that week, together with that team, made possible by Chubb because the insurance policy we have allows me to give the keys to anyone. I can go, hey, Frank, Steve, Jeff and Jane, take your pick and just go and drive these cars. So at lunchtime, we'd stop and we'd just go, hey, I, I, I fancy trying that car and he fancies trying that car. And to be able to have that experience, to hop in and out of those cars in the Alps, was a phenomenal way to kick off Q1 this year. 
Okay, number six. Now this one could easily be number one because for us it was a really big deal, certainly internally. But this is the Uncut Channel, the launch of an entirely new JWW Uncut Channel. And the idea behind this channel was it's sharing everything that typically unfolds once we stop filming on the main channel. So it's a, a sort of in-depth behind the scenes channel. But we've had so much fun with it. The comments from you have been way beyond our expectations. And it's all to do with travel, behind the scenes, trials and tribulations, when things go wrong, when things go right, people, hotels, cars, whatever it is. It's, it's everything that historically we've never really shown. And I remember filming the first few episodes for the Uncut channel thinking, why have we never shown this stuff? Why don't we trial something? Why don't we just go full BTS, what we now call full uncut, and see how it unfolds? I think the epitome of this was Monterey Car Week, and it was a blend of Nico, DDE, the surroundings of travel of Monterey, LA, and that car culture, and it was all of the craziness and wild stuff that happened off camera. And we've just loved it. I mean, on the Aston Martin DB12 drive, it was funny, we were out there for the car, but we spent as much time filming the hotel. All of that's on the Uncut channel. And it's really the response and reaction from you that has sort of affirmed that you want a lot more of it. We really want to dig deep on the Uncut and roll. And what I would like to hear from you is just how Uncut do you want it? Because like, I could almost go daily, almost. I could almost go daily vlog. Really, I want to take this opportunity to get an insight from you as to what you like about the Uncut channel, your favorite sorts of content, and if you just want to see everything or are there specific things that you enjoy. Rest assured, Uncut next year, it's going big. Number five, Bunker Group. Bunker Group is something that Darren and I co-founded and it's a collection of companies that sort of underpin and serve the automotive industry. Recruitment Bunker in there, which is a recruitment agency that specializes in serving the automotive space, even though we will place all sorts of people in all sorts of roles. So with Production Bunker, we've been incredibly fortunate to work with some phenomenal brands this year. We've produced content for Millimilia, Lego. We've worked closely with Porsche, Chubb. They're a Fortune 500 company and the team keeps growing. Now we've got web developers, graphic designers, animators, videographers, editors in that group, over 40 people across different departments. One of the departments that we're really lucky to grow next year is very much on the content creation side. So if you're a videographer, an editor, anyone who's sort of in the world of content production, curation, researcher, feel free to get in touch. I'm gonna put a link in the description below to an email address if you're interested in getting involved in that world. We are recruiting and recruiting quite heavily right now for something that will unfold soon. Production Bunker has grown a huge amount and you'll see a lot more of that next year too in that we have offices both north and south. We have an office here in Coventry and we also have an office up north in Scotland. That team has grown. This premises has been a big part of the investment. We decided to move Logic in here as well. Now, Logic is a paint company which Darren and I invested in over the last 12 months. There's a much bigger picture as to the reason that we got involved in the acquisition of Logic. And that's gonna form part of number one, which I shall share with you soon. This premises and the premises up north in Scotland is a real, I guess, look at our intention of growth and where this is heading. One of those reasons is to support something so colossal that I'm still gearing up for how I'm gonna articulate that to you. Okay, number four, and this is a realm that's really close to my heart, which is really driving cars and experiencing them, is the best track drives of the year. Now we put road and track separately because some of these machines are getting so extreme now that you can only really experience them in their full on a circuit. These are in no particular order, but I'm gonna go with Spa. So earlier this year, we were invited by Manti Racing to go and do one of the Porsche experience days. Uh, at Spa, full circuit, and we back to back the new 992 GT3 RS and the latest generation 992 Cup car back to back at Spa to see how the two compare. You couldn't design a better day for a petrol head. Here's Spa with basically no cars on track for you to go and explore. Fresh Michelin slicks, fresh set of Michelin Cup 2s, but the fact that you could lean on those road compound tires on a road legal car and be not a million miles off a Cup car is pretty impressive. So as far as one of the best drives that I've had this year, it's definitely that day. Then we're going to almost the opposite end of the spectrum. At the Goodwood Festival of Speed, we did a Yesco attack run up the hill climb with Marcus, one of Koenigsegg's lead development drivers. That was one of the most terrified that I've been in a car for some time.
because Marcus was giving it all 10 tenths up a, well basically it's somebody's driveway isn't it? It's Lord March's driveway and uh, it's super thin, it's narrow and 1600 horsepower. So in terms of, you know, experiences in cars this year, that also was well up there. This year as well, going back to spending more time on track, we finally took the McLaren Senna to Silverstone, which as far as I'm concerned, is the home circuit for that car. It was part of a McLaren Pure Experience Day, which is when McLaren exclusively take out various tracks around the world and make it this dedicated McLaren experience. To be able to get Senna back out again after it's spending about eight months of the previous year in the Middle East, to get it out on Silverstone and give it 10 tenths was a fantastic experience. And then, this might seem pretty generic and top line, but I still think my st favorite stretch of tarmac on planet Earth is the Nürburgring. So much so that we now keep the 992 GT3 there permanently. So 992 GT3 with the new IP magnesium wheels and the titanium exhaust system was one of the highlights of this year for sure. But finally, I think what actually takes it has got to be the Valkyrie at Ascari. Well, I'm not sure I'll ever go that fast in a car. Definitely not with two seats. Definitely not with two seats. Now, I didn't actually drive that car on that particular lap, but to be in it, in the hands of both Marco Sorensen and Nicky Team, who are both current works factory Aston Martin drivers, and to get the most out of that car, it's the best demonstration of performance that I've seen on screen is when, ironically, the car has stopped. I take my helmet off and you can visibly see how utterly destroyed I am from how much aero, downforce and performance this car had. It was absolutely magic and a true honor to experience just one of the 40 cars which they've made. AMR Pro is outstanding, over $4 million. It's got more downforce than it weighs. It's a naturally aspirated, high revving V12. And um, that for me was the biggest contextualizer as to just how far you can push a car that a mere mortal can access. So I think that for me was my top automotive experience of 2023. Okay, number three, let's get back to business. We're talking about the Driven Automotive Group. Now this is a collection of companies Darren and I made a investment into. So within this group, we have ITG air filters, We've got Penzo, which is this engineering enterprise that sits behind the automotive world that develops turnkey solutions for automotive brands to effectively build new cars. So an automotive brand will come to Penzo and say, we want to launch this car. Can you help us with crash test simulation, design, engineering, carbon fiber, etc." That's in group. There are quite a few companies within this group which have created a very unique self-contained ecosystem. Uh, which is absolutely prime for building, developing and engineering automotive products from the ground up. So earlier this year, uh, we made a very heavy investment into that group. Really honored to be part of it because there's some incredibly exciting things to be coming out of that, uh, which I shall share with you quite soon. Number two, the launch and announcement of our very own Koenigsegg dealership, Koenigsegg London. Welcome to Sweden, welcome to Angleholm, and your eyes are not deceiving you. You read this title correctly. I'm about to take you on one of the most exclusive content journeys of launching Koenigsegg London, our very own official Koenigsegg dealer right in the heart of Britain's capital. be opening in Kensington in London uh, at the very beginning of the new year. This is a journey that took us the best part of two years to actually realize. Darren and I worked very closely with Christian and Haldora and Tariq and Andreas and the whole Koenigsegg family to make this possible. We launched it six months ago in the height of summer. This week delivered our first customer Koenigsegg Yesco and we've spent the summer 
cultivating that brand, speaking to VIPs, friends, family, colleagues to join us on this journey. It's one of my all time favorite brands. We know from the numbers and engagement that based on the views, it's one of your favorite brands, but really it's the people. It's the people behind these cars that really make that brand so special. To say that we are officially part of the Koenigsegg family and that we are able to supply Koenigseggs to passionate people all over the world kind of blows my mind. It's really an opportunity for us to say a massive thank you to Koenigsegg, the whole team, for putting their trust in us. We're still pinching ourselves that we can call ourselves Koenigsegg dealers. So thank you so much for that support. This is a big team behind the scenes making this happen. And to sit here, closing the year out as official Koenigsegg dealers, proper hairs. I've actually got hairs, man, like standing up. It's unreal. We're hitting the ground running, opening our dealership very early in January. It is going to be a hell of a ride. Number one. Now I know what you're thinking. If Koenigsegg London was number two, what the hell is number one? Well, you may have remembered that period about six weeks ago where I sort of vanished offline for about a month. In the history of the channel, I I've never been away for a week, never mind over a month. The reason for that is we have been working on something that is so cataclysmic clismically massive that to get it over the line it required me to step away from everything and just focus entirely on that together with the rest of our team. Now while I'm sitting here realizing that we actually did get that thing over the line and it is going to become a reality, if you've put the pieces together of what I've shared over the last few updates a lot of this ecosystem feeds in to making number one possible. I'm trying to contextualize it, I can't, I can't. It's not until you're in that moment going, how did we get here, that you realize, actually, we've been cultivating this really unique set of ingredients and a phenomenal team and invested in the right companies to bring this ecosystem together to make this next chapter happen. And this next chapter is so far beyond anything that James five years ago, when he started filming a channel on an iPhone 6, would have ever imagined. We actually haven't filmed the announcement of this thing yet. And that requires us to fly to a faraway land very early next year and film that thing. So I'm not actually going to tell you right now. <laughs> I'm going to tell you very early on in the new year what that's all about. I'm going to leave that with you there with a classic YouTube frustrating cliffhanger to say tune in early next year for me to... Uh, I basically need the Christmas break to figure out how I'm going to film the gravitas of the announcement next year. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Ciao.